let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello, horror hounds, and welcome to Now Slaying, an It Slays podcast production where we break down the latest and greatest in the world of horror. I'm your not so humble host, Colton. Oh my God, and it's and... my first time. <laughs> I was just about to introduce you, and today on the show, making what I believe to be his now slaying debut, we have the one, the only, Mike. It's me. Hi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we also have Jill. She's here as well. Yeah. We're popping cherries today. All over the place. Um, and it's just three of us, no Rowan. To the tune no of Rowan. Breaking Dishes by Rihanna. Which We're popping uh, cherries is very strange. <laughs> I wish Rowan were here to help celebrate the occasion, but uh, what can you do? He just hates movies that star Michael Monroe, of course. You know, it's you know, it's not going to be a very heterosexual, hetero, heterosexual <laughs> environment. Today on the show, we're going to be reviewing Long Legs, which was released July twelfth, twenty twenty four, exclusively in theaters. Jill, in my opinion, Long's, Long Legs has had one of the best marketing campaigns for a horror movie that I've seen in years, and due to that, it's garnered quite a bit of buzz leading up to its release. So I want to know, did you buy into the hype? Were you looking forward to Long Legs? I mean, I didn't look too much into the movie. Like, I wanted to go in kind of blind and not really mm-hmm. know what it was about, and I'm happy I did, because uh, I didn't even realize, like, right at the beginning that it was Nick Cage as Long Legs until the credits rolled up, and I was like, no way, but then later on I could see it. But yeah, it's been really hyped, and honestly, it's a very hyped horror summer. It's very stacked this summer. We got Maxine, we got Long Legs, we got Nosferatu, and we've got Beetlejuice coming up. So well, I feel like Nosferatu's like Christmas time, but yes, you know, still a horror we're summer. We're excited. We're yeah. we're excited. Yeah. Um and yeah, um I feel like everyone's been talking about it. I'm seeing a lot of people either liking it or they don't like it and they're like it's not very scary. Um but yeah, very I was divisive. definitely yeah. eating it up and ready to go what about you guys oh i was I mean, like hardcore looking forward to it <laughs> were, were you checking out the trailers and stuff beforehand mike or were you trying no. to be on media blackout or? oh no i the only thing that i checked out was the like posters mm-hmm. um with like the stills because yeah. they're yeah. just completely devoid of context but you know there are like they use there's so many like fucking creepy ass um images in this movie and as like somebody who's a huge fan of like design and like poster design and stuff, I think they had some of the best like hype driving posters and images that I've seen in a very, very long time. Because mm-hmm. all of those images they used on the like teaser posters were so fucking creepy. And like you just were like, what the fuck is the context of this? I need to know. But I was like, I'm not going to look it up. All I knew was like kind of the basic premise. And that was it. That, what that's you? similar to myself. I, I was trying to avoid most of it as well. Like, obviously, I saw the weird cryptic. Twitter posts and the posters as you said and saw people like hyping up that there was coded messages and like a few newspapers and stuff but by and large I was pretty much on media blackout for it I think before Maxine there was a trailer for it and I just kind of like pulled up my phone and was just reading social media instead of paying attention to it I've also seen a couple of Osgood Perkins's like other movies like uh what was it the Black Coat's Daughter when I saw it mm-hmm. originally it was called February um and that was pretty decent little movie i know other people have seen like his hansel and gretel remake or legally blonde legally blonde (laughs) what he He was in it (laughs) was he yes okay well i know him as like the horror director not as the the legally blonde star i guess oh god he wasn't it as dorky david (laughs) wow that's uh that changes everything i think i know but yeah i you know, I, I was looking forward to this one as well. I'm always down to see kind of like this serial killer horror that kind of veers a little bit or serial killer story that kind of veers a little bit closer to horror like this one. And uh, obviously, I, I love Micah Monroe. I, I mean, she's basically kills it every single time she's in something. So I was hoping she'd knock it out of the park in this one as well. So does Long Legs have a long shelf life? Well, before we get into that, let's kick it on over to the trailer. You could have... You might size me, but you didn't. And now that has led to all of this. Long legs. 
airbags in theaters July 12th. Rated R. What you just heard is from Long Legs, written and directed by Osgood Perkins, and the story is as follows. In pursuit of a serial killer known as Long Legs, an FBI agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end this terrifying killing spree. Now, here on Now Slang, we like to keep things relatively spoiler-free up front before moving into the more in-depth, spoiler-filled discussion. So, Mike, what are your spoiler-free thoughts on Long Legs? Are you able to talk about a movie without spoiling it? Uh, let's you see. Chance. You know it's so hard, and listen, <laughs> if if I do a spoiler by accident, know that it is an accident, and that you're just going to have to ban me from all future <laughs> Now Slang discussions. Uh, Rowan eternity. just edited in, like... I don't know, Nick Cage's voice squeal, you know, if he, if <laughs> Mike spoils something. Okay, um, my thoughts, like just in general? <laughs> yeah, sure, just your general thoughts on the movie, like spoiler free, don't spoil, you know, anything probably after the first half hour or okay, so. Okay, well, you know, but... what I want to say is this. Obviously, we know from every movie I've ever seen or talked about that I love the aesthetic. It's a movie. It has yeah. to have an aesthetic. Like, that's just like, why make a movie? Why not write a book? So um, I thought that this, first and foremost, lived up to the... I'm not going to say, like, I don't want to touch the hype of, like, everybody saying, like, oh, how scary it is and, like, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of, like, the hype of the look of the movie and, like, making it feel really kind of, like, unsavory, I think that the, like, aesthetic totally fucking blew me away like it was like paintings and i just thought everything was framed so beautifully um mm -hmm. the sets were really cool um considering the location it should it should have looked probably very bland and boring um but it, i just thought it was very skillfully presented um that's yeah. my like favorite thing about this movie i'm not gonna lie i was just like sitting back there i really want to go again and just like then i don't i'm not gonna be paying attention to like the characters or plot at all and just like lean back and just like enjoy the visual and that's it yeah that's kind of what i took away instantly from the movie as well it was just like the technical precision lots of interesting shot compositions like center framing really wide lenses yeah a lot of like um just the way the characters are positioned and whatnot, it always feels a little bit like unnerving. Mm -hmm. Like there's a scene that involves uh, Kieran and Shipka where the characters are talking to one another, but like the eye line is always off. They're never like looking directly at one another, which I was just like, I was constantly like, this is weird. Is it a technical hiccup? And then I'm like, well, the rest of the movie is perfectly done. So no, obviously this yeah. is the decision that he's just doing to kind of make it feel a little bit off kilter. But that was something like I noticed throughout as well that I, I really liked as well yeah everything was that was one thing like when i was walking out of it i was like you know it's like that classic shirley jackson quote it was like everything about it like literally everything and i don't mean this as a drag was like off you know every character was <laughs> off everything just felt like wrong at least a little yeah. bit even the things that weren't you know like the things that were wrong were very wrong but like even the things just everything and it just added up to this like giant creepy fucking like you know distortion yeah i found and i you know obviously that's like the form of the shots and stuff kind of like works with the function of the whole mood of the movie <laughs> Yeah, Jill, what do you think about it? What are some of your spoiler-free thoughts? Outside of just the aesthetic, I guess. Well, I just want to say, first, on the vibes and the aesthetic alone, um, it's something that really captured me and like locked me in immediately with the red intro credits, the music, mm -hmm. um, and that opening scene where there's kind of a jump scare where you see the jump scare. I'm not, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's when I was like, oh, shit, it got me. Let's go. I'm so excited to see where this goes. The little boxy um, 70s home video square. Yes, yeah. yeah. It was it was awesome. But apart from that, like you said, everything being off, um I noticed the main character was a, so Lee Harker, she was especially off and when I was first watching it I was like, ah, oh, she's got a touch of the tism. She's just like me. Sort of deal. <laughs> um and then later on I was like, oh, okay, it makes more sense now. I see why she's yeah. off, but um you're right, everything was off. Um I liked that it was very 
kind of like policey and trying to figure out what was going on reminded me a lot of zodiac um from back in the day Mm -hmm. um i actually really like that i didn't expect this to be that type of movie that with the supernatural uh like undertones was really cool the religious stuff was interesting and yeah i i thought it was just really fun and refreshing, honestly, because it it's so different from a lot of the stuff we're seeing out there. And I love Nick Cage. Nick Cage can do anything. He can do no wrong with me. And one more thing, I didn't realize Kiernan Shipka was in this um, until I saw it. And I love Kiernan Shipka. <laughs> and Same. she was also in Same. The Black Hood's Daughter. So yeah. they must have some kind of rapport. For sure. uh, but yeah, she was also so creepy. <laughs> Oh yeah, she she was excellent. Like, uh, yeah. I think the performances pretty much across the board in this movie are pretty great. Obviously, Nick Cage, you mentioned, he has like the biggest like kind of over the top performance, like a show-y. almost like yeah, like yeah. so over the top that I think it should almost like cripple the rest of the movie because the rest of the movie is so dour and so serious for mm-hmm. you know outside of a couple of like supernatural aspects but for whatever reason it still works as well like I do really like what he's doing and I like how long the movie kind of holds or like frames his face strangely as well before you finally see like almost the monster like front and center in front of you yeah yeah I thought that was really well done um Micah Monroe I really liked her in this movie I I don't know if I've seen her in this sort of role before where she's like I don't know she's almost like wolfish in a way like she's very like dedicated raised in a forest Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were looking at this uh, I, I meant right? wolfish in like in like uh, on the pursuit, like a hunter, uh, yeah. like you know, very like you know, like that, not like feral child. That's but... what I was thinking. I guess my <laughs> yeah. point went more yeah. back to what Jill was saying. <laughs> yeah. But but I, yeah, I thought she was really cool in this movie. She reminded me of like uh, a detective that should have been in something like a, a True Detective season or something like that. You know, obviously this flawed character that's just mentally unwell you know, mm-hmm. for the whole thing. A couple of things like before I, you know, we get into spoilers is like, I thought the opening scene, as I think Mike mentioned, was like particularly excellent uh, as is a chase scene, probably within the first 10 to 15 minutes throughout the movie. Like I thought a lot of this movie, what I enjoyed the most was probably front loaded a little bit is mm-hmm. what I'll say, like probably within the first 40 minutes or so. And after that, the movie kind of takes some big swings and kind of veers in different directions that it didn't completely lose me, but I did find myself wishing a little bit just for like the more weirdly straightforward cop procedural with some like occult killings and kind of like a hint of that rather than it kind of explaining everything later on that we'll definitely get into in in the spoiler filled discussion did either you guys find the movie a little bit slow or was that just me watching it after like a really long week of work (laughs) i did find it slow but kind of like you just said it lost me in the third act um mostly because what I really enjoyed about the movie, the atmosphere kind of Falls uh, dove off. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And you lose a lot of what made it uh, suspenseful and scary in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, But the second watch, I knew it was going on and I, I kind of enjoyed it more, honestly. Yeah. Is it something on a second watch that there's enough like little hints and uh, enough explanations on your first watch that you've got something more out of it on a second? Yeah. There's oh, okay. a lot of things that I should have gotten on the first watch, but yeah. I guess I was just so, I don't know, focused on different things that I didn't notice. Like, I'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is. And I watched it like two days in a row, like on Friday wow. and Saturday. So, you know, I enjoyed it both times. The last thing I'll say, I guess, just before we, we jump to the spoiler filled discussion is that I found the writing at some point a little poor or a little hokey. And I don't know if it was supposed to be like there was a few moments where I actually did kind of like laugh out loud a little bit. Like, um, for example, there's this scene where she's calling her mother on the phone and her mother says, like, you know, do you say your prayers? Good. You must say your prayers to keep you safe from the devil. And I was just mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> like, we, we know what the implication is. I don't know if you have to spell it out quite so explicitly. And there was a few lines like that specifically within probably the first hour that I just felt like he didn't know how to write some of these characters when they were talking to one another. It's I just thought she that. was like catatonic, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you can get that as well from it, but... I mean, she meant it, though. She really wanted her daughter to be safe. But also, I, it made people in my theater laugh. Uh, okay. There's, like, a couple of moments like that, but especially that one I remember people laughing at, so... Yeah, which uh, I don't yeah. know if that's the movie's <laughs> intention at that point, or if Probably it's supposed not. to... Yeah, because I feel like there's even like a, a musical note that is supposed to be like kind of like scary because you're evoking, you know, the devil's name or something. Uh-huh. But I remember when I was watching it, I thought I was like, 
just strange phrasing. Like, it's a little silly. Would you guys recommend that people check this one out in theaters? Just, you know, we're not getting into our full, like, rating, nay or yay or slay or whatever. But, like, do you think it's worth heading out to the theaters to see while it's still there? Oh, I do, for sure. Yeah? I okay. think it's a very, Great. like... I mean, it's not, you know, like, a lot of times people are like, oh, you have to go see, like, an action movie or whatever, like the Marvel movie in theaters. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I get that because it's so bombastic and stuff. But I think this is just so, like, painterly and stuff that... And, you know, you're sitting in the dark with a bunch of people that you don't know. And I think that lends itself well to this style of movie. And I found it was... Uh, we went Thursday evening. Um, so one of the first two, like, preview showings. Yeah. And it was literally packed, except for like the very first two rows, you know, the nosebleeds. Oh, nice. except, I call them except it's, mm -hmm. a, I, it's it's the opposite of nosebleed. It's like a neck cracker where you're like literally <laughs> on the floor right in front of the screen. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it was a really it was really nice, um, like camaraderie. Everybody was really excited and um, like happy to be there. I just think it's a cool experience for this type of movie because, you know, it's not like some big, massive studio film, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a little cute. I just I and I it's just so beautifully shot, be beautifully shot that, you know, I feel like it deserves a theater watch myself personally. I'm glad I saw it in theaters. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Before I I, I mean, yes, definitely go watch it. It's refreshing. It's different. It's something fun to go see. I wouldn't say it's the scariest thing. Like, don't go in thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a scary movie, the scariest movie ever or whatever. Just go see it and enjoy it for what it is. But I went to two different theaters <laughs> for this. And yeah. the first one I went to, uh, the people behind me, they had, like, younger kids. I was like, why would you bring your kids to see this in the first place? But... Man, these kids were so annoying. They're like kicking oh. my seat and just like making a racket with their candy and just like running around and shit. And that pissed me off. Second time, there's like two adult women behind me. Um, and in this theater, I ended up kind of like in a, uh, how do I say this tastefully? A fight? <laughs> No, uh, okay. no. Um, okay. An area of town that's not so good. I, I was oh. in Philly. I went to straight up Philly for this one by accident. <laughs> and I wasn't even sure if the building was a theater because there was no sign. And then oh, when I sick. went in, they checked my bags. Like There was a security guy checking my bag. And there was one employee working the snack stand. So I'll stand there forever waiting for my popcorn. But they had recliner seats. So I was like, fuck yeah. But anyways, there were two ladies behind me who would not shut the fuck up. Like they're having a straight up conversation. And uh, I cannot stand it when people are talking in the theater. Yeah. And I've never shushed someone before. But I gave them the nastiest like librarian yeah. shush when they were talking. And they, and they shut up right away. But then they kept going. <laughs> Like, oh. like they're doing it to spite me now. Oh. And I was like, can you please stop? Um, they kept going. Someone else shushed them. But yeah, they didn't shut up the whole time. But it definitely made me angry. So I was trying to focus on the movie. But also in the back of my head, I was like fighting the urge to scream at someone. Mm -hmm. But yeah. What about you, Colton? <laughs> yeah, I know listeners love hearing about our theater experiences. So for me, I, I went... Uh, <laughs> With a, a friend of mine who, honestly, she doesn't like horror at all. Like, she's one of those kind of, like, scaredy cats. Like, I think she's watched The Lighthouse with me. But, like, for example, we haven't watched, like, a Hereditary or, like, a The Witch or Midsummer or anything that's kind of, like, a more traditional, like, what people would call, like, a modern, like, scary horror movie. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit too much for her. But for whatever reason, the FBI angle of this one intrigued her. So I went with her and a couple of PAs I work with. And I'd say the theater was, like, kind of about half full. And people were respectful, thankfully. We just sat there. I never had... There was no one talking, no one on TikTok, you know, no one, like, making a big racket with their food, which which was nice. Um, and, yeah, similar to both of you, I, I recommend seeing this in theaters, mostly just because it's an indie horror movie, of course, like, that's being put off by Neon, which, of course, is, you know, similar to A24. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's they're doing a little bit more elevated stuff. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, go see it, of course, support it. But also, this movie is doing actually incredibly well compared to what I was expecting it to do. I think it's going to have like a 20 or $30 million weekend, which is huge for this sort of movie, but also a testament to just how great the marketing was once again, mm -hmm. even with like now the very divisive score that's yeah. coming out of the screenings, which I'm, I don't know if you've seen, but like it's very much like it has loads of five stars and loads of one stars, depending on yeah. where you look. So yeah, I, I would recommend checking it out in theaters as well. Uh, just to give a little bit money well, I you mean, know, its way. It just goes to show that there's, you know, all this like discourse about like people 
going to theaters to see movies and not going to theaters to see movies and what the reason is and then everybody fighting about it and blah 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 and you know what whatever you can say this about it one way and you can say that about it the other way but when a movie looks good and is marketed brilliantly put all your money into marketing instead of you know green screen and shit like yeah. that and maybe people will go see your movie how about that that's all i'm saying because I, I well you were saying something about the like how much money i saw like two hours ago maybe that it was like 22 point something million they were there saying it was this weekend yeah. on and they were estimating like seven to nine so Crazy. like that's wow, insane right? that's in, absolutely yeah. insane for like this little indie horror movie starring like essentially nobody yeah, you know what's funny too is that maxine just came out and people were hyped for maxine and it's part of a franchise but i've seen more people talking about long legs and mm-hmm. going to see long legs than maxine which is crazy well maxine yeah, kind of yeah. maxine literally didn't dribble anything out at all for like a year they were like coming 2024 and then that was it and there was one on set picture like six months ago and that was it like this i feel like they've been dropping those like little still mm-hmm. creepy posters and stuff and pictures from it like mm-hmm. and the just steadily even. yeah for like the last six or seven months so i don't know i feel like that really got people kind of like hooked from the beginning yeah long legs was always in the discussion even if you didn't know what it was like the, the like the the glyphs or the you know mm-hmm. the hieroglyphics of the names and stuff on social medias and stuff like before they even were making it like an official long legs marketing account like it was existing like back in the fall of just weird pictures and shit right like yeah they knew what they were doing and you know it's gonna turn out very well for them this this opening weekend so yeah this is one that all three of us recommend you go see in theaters and with that i think it's time to cut to our spoiler discussion for long legs we are now in our spoiler discussion for long legs so if you've not seen long legs it's time to tune out and come back once you've seen the movie or keep listening if you simply don't care. Usually I throw it to one of you guys right away just so you can get something off your chest, spit it out there. But I I, I just want to know, <laughs> were you guys kind of surprised within the first probably like 10 minutes of the movie that we just casually reveal that the, the main character is psychic? And also the FBI has psychic training modules to kind of see like how, uh, you know, psychic somebody is. That, that was an aspect to the movie that I was like, all right. I think it's really silly, but I just have to kind of push it away and basically just, you know, think of it almost as like a Stephen King, you know, setup or something. It was something right away. I was like, this is strange to me. Did did it work for you guys right off the bat or, you know, how do you feel about it? I loved it. I loved it because they don't like they don't it's not like marketed as like a psychic thriller or something like that. Right. Or like, you know, she's using her psychic powers to like stay you know, one step ahead of the killer or whatever. It was Mm -hmm. just this very, you know, subtle and like, it's just inserted. And so I'm like, okay, cool. This is like, they just, they're like making a world and you're here. You know what I mean? And I loved it. It really reminded me because they used to use that trope like a lot in like 90s thrillers, especially with like serial killers of like a psychic. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a really subtle, cool sort of like throwback to that era of like maybe like VHS thrillers and stuff. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I was surprised by it. But then I was like, (laughs) No, you know what? I get it. Totally. I'm here for it. Like, I just I I was already in the car getting kidnapped. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was already being was taken a... to the second location. <laughs> yeah. Before I realized it was like a psychic type of thing, I thought it was a psychiatric kind of exam because of what she just yeah. witnessed yeah. with her partner or whatever. But like Mike said, I think it's really cool and it kind of gives you this sense of the unknown and that the FBI knows more than we know. And I kind of like that. Um, what about you, Colton? Yeah, it, it was something, as I mentioned, it, it, it was weird to me and I don't know if I fully liked it, but I didn't like hate it. And the movie, thankfully, doesn't use it as like a crutch to kind of mm-hmm. reveal, you know, the steps of the, you know, the case or anything like that. It's not like she's there just like meditating and all of a sudden, you know, she gets a premonition that answers this question she's still doing the work and almost even like to the detriment of the movie a little bit like that kind of psychic element just kind of falls by you know it just fades away as the movie goes on partially maybe through like the destruction of the dolls and all this sort yeah. of shit that happens but as i was watching it i was just like this was a really weird development here that it's like just once again where the movies feel so like deathly serious that it's like oh also the main character is psychic and obviously we've all seen these cop procedurals where you know someone just has a hunch it has to be this person i just just know it is but they don't actually have they don't say the words that they're like psychic at all and yeah. this it's very explicitly it's like, like oh, intuition yeah, they yeah. have intuition that's what yes. it is yeah yeah which which i just thought it was a little bit funny i didn't hate it um 
I almost wish it just went one way or the other, though, that there was a little bit more of it used throughout or if it was just, you know, cop intuition or whatever, you know. It was funny that there was literally the FBI had like a psychic yeah. intuition exam, you know, that they were running and they were like, oh, you did well. It only took you like three times to guess the number or whatever, you know. But it wasn't in the end like a psychic yeah. type of thing. It was because of the brain and the doll and everything. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the ball whatever. and yeah. you know, all this stuff. I know. And a yeah. gift given to her by Crimson or Clover, you know, I, I, I get <laughs> it. But like for most of the movie, we're just like, damn, she's psychic. <laughs> Where yeah. did that come from? Another thing that kind of caught me off guard was obviously the interrogation scene between her and Nick Cage is pretty fun. Oh, my God. But. The face smashing. This is a new thing in horror that, um, what was it? Talk to me did it there like a a year ago. And I was like, man, that was pretty fucking brutal. And then the exorcism with uh, Russell Crowe there a couple, or the exorcist, exorcism, exorcism, a couple of weeks ago did it in a really, really poor way where it wasn't like effective at all. I was just like, what the hell? Why, why they even bother? This was another one where I was like, man, Nick Cage's death in this movie, pretty gnarly, (laughs) pretty difficult to watch. His nose, like his nose yeah. missing yeah. was the yeah. best part. And Make him he like just a hole. down. Oh yeah. my God. So good. I hated yeah. that the one of the only things that like I I was not sitting there going like, oh, what's going to happen? I was just kind of like, again, like, OK, I'm been kidnapped. I'm just in the back of the car, like going along for the ride. But one of the only pictures that I had seen before the movie was there's like a still and it's now one of the main ones used of like Micah Monroe like against a wall and there's blood splattered everywhere Horrified. and as yeah. soon as I saw her sit down and saw the door behind her I was like oh this is the that's the door that's behind her in the still so I knew oh, okay. I knew I kind of knew what was going to happen so I was like oh this sucks because if I had not seen that still I totally it would have like but I was just sitting there then that whole scene like going okay what's going to happen what can he do like is this this is going to end bad <laughs> yeah i've seen that still like numerous times as well but i don't think i like pieced together like all the aspects of it like the little bit of blood on her neck and stuff yeah. like that like so it was still a surprise to me um, i just like looked at it, it a lot because just... i was like oh my god like she's yeah. serving look at her with dark hair you know <laughs> oh yeah 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 i i guess kind of like the aspects of the movie that i i don't like is when we're getting closer to the third act where this movie kind of becomes almost like a cursed doll sort of movie <laughs> May. How, how how did we all feel about that? Where it's like, did we like that with where they're, you know, long legs is a doll maker. He's putting these, you know, bobbles inside that, you know, have something something to do with power, something to do with Satan. You know, there's hand waving, you know, there's all these unique aspects of the doll um, that they're being snuck into the home by Lee Harker's mother. <laughs> How did we feel about kind of like this long, lengthy exposition on how this happens? Was it necessary? Like, did we need Mm -hmm. that in this movie? I don't know. That's what kind of lost me. But that's also one of the things that makes this movie a little bit different. Because did they need an evil satanic doll? No. Um, And I also hate like fake Satanism. Like, oh, I worship Satan in movies. I'm really tired of that trope. But... I don't really care anymore because I watched it. I still like it. Um, But yeah, it it gets a little convoluted because of that. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the like delivery of it in that it was like a like expository monologue. Yeah, I think she gets like knocked unconscious or something. And then it's just like this big like explanation for. And I was like, okay, okay, this is a choice. But also, yeah. <laughs> to be brutally honest, I did kind of appreciate it because it definitely chopped what would have been another like 20 minutes of showing that on film and it would have made it really long. <laughs> um, but also, I like when that was happening, I was like, oh, no, like I'm going to hate the rest of this movie because like this expository shit like sounds like it's going to be awful. But then like once she finished it and then we started seeing it happen. I was like, okay, I actually, like, honestly, I thought I was going to hate the last bit, but I, I, it reeled me right back in. I was like, this is uh, like a whole new movie for me now. So I actually, re- like, I was like right back along. Like, for, they, they kind of threw me out a bit and then they fucking pulled me right back in. <laughs> you just liked seeing Alicia Witt with a shotgun. I did. I did. Oh my shit. God. I was like, bah! I actually screamed. I think that was, I was oh, the yeah. only person that made a sound that whole movie it was me like screaming when she pulled out that shotgun. Gun. and she was wearing a nun's hat and i was like this yeah. is my heaven like i yeah. literally just i've i've died and not and gone once heaven. but twice yeah 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 she didn't need that second oh, yeah. bullet no she was like i'm making Goes sure there's not to the other side yeah double yeah. Taps him. yeah there's there's gonna be no head left on that 
on those shoulders at all. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, and I, I also find dolls with... really creepy. So I thought that yeah. was kind of a cool like Trojan horse, <laughs> you know, for a satanic <laughs> Trojan horse. The doll aspect for me just kind of created this weird like logic issue where it's like if there's these very specific handmade dolls left at every single scene as well like you'd probably wind up looking for like some sort of doll maker right like these weird handmade handcrafted dolls with human hair and all this stuff as you know that one guy explains early in the movie that i was just like i feel like you would have solved this case a little bit quicker like how large of a town this is and how the weird guy who's going to the tool store that like the girl on the cash knows who he is you know like i feel like you would eventually settle on this nick cage character as probably the killer after a couple of these dolls pop up you know but i mean i guess that's where you just kind of got to like throw logic away yeah um for me, I, I did like Alicia Witt being like this murderous nurse as like kind of like this arbiter for Satan going around. And I liked how the movie kind of framed it in like your normal like religious um, zealotry of just like, you know, prayer and Christianity and stuff like basically leading you to think that like, OK, she's just a very devout Christian woman, mm-hmm. but actually she's just a very devout satanic woman, I guess. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Which is like, OK, I, I kind of like that. It just portrayed it as one in the same, really. You know, that was that was an interesting aspect. It was. Uh, it was a nice little me. wrinkle. It was like, yeah. you know, she's at there's like a war going on, <laughs> except it's like all in her. <laughs> Although I think it, I think it's weird that like Lee never noticed it. I, I thought there was going to be a reveal to this movie where like Lee was kind of like covering up for her mom or something like that. Like where deep down inside she, mm-hmm. she, knew she knew yeah about it, but like she just couldn't accept it or something like that. But no, it's just honestly, she just missed, I guess, the signs <laughs> directly in front of her. As you do. Was there, <laughs> yeah i assume that the doll being there or whatever situation with her doll is that she didn't get like woken up until near the end when yeah. shit was going down yeah but... so she was just call it kind of always on like under a trance or under a yeah. spell where yeah. she yeah. never had like much agency i guess over her actions and whatnot which yeah. i guess is like how some people kind of see like the the portrayal of her almost being like on the spectrum where yeah. she's you know just not fully aware or fully exactly. awake i guess for me i just always saw it as kind of like that really unwell cop character that doesn't sleep very much is too obsessed with the case you know doesn't eat and take breaks or anything like that i kind of just like i was like oh we've seen like jake gyllenhaal play this character half a dozen times so it's fine to see michael monroe play it once yeah it's weird i didn't yeah. like i didn't that's not how i interpreted her from the beginning at all like yeah. i literally was watching it going no there's something deeply unwell in her and i just don't know what it is and like you know i i I, my mind went all over the place but it wasn't like you know she's so dedicated it was like literally like you know obsessive but also like she was i was like she's living in like another part of her mind you know what i mean like she's seems like very Mm -hmm. detached from what she's doing sometimes and i don't know it's maybe that's just like right from the beginning i was like oh yeah no i there's there's something going on in her something gotcha. something unique something different i just want to jump back to the camera angles and talk about uh one of my favorite shots is when she comes back into her house which is kind of like seems like a cabin in the woods type of deal mm-hmm. and you know that wide shot where she's in the hallway i think that looked really nice yeah. but also when she's up late at night with her bowl of cereal uh, trying to decode this letter she just got and we're already on nerve because we know there's someone out and about yeah. the way that the camera is panned out so far and you can see like the background of her kitchen or whatever the whole mm-hmm. time i was looking and i was like oh, okay yeah. something's gonna jump up and they did that a lot in the movie and especially her mom uh when you see the card her mom shows up with a gun uh, a lot of people like screamed at that um or they when they noticed her before she got right up in the frame mm-hmm. and i think oh my god um, the girls yeah, in front of me really all three cool. of them actually jumped out of their seats yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i thought that was really cool yeah no you're right there is a lot of good use of framing in the movie and kind of like how they reveal things even you know the as we mentioned the opening scene jump scare you know the way that uh-huh. nick cage is oh, framed yeah. long legs like right from like kind of the yeah. lips down the whole time and then right at the end he kind of just leans in the frame and yeah. like it's not enough to register what he looks like but it's enough to kind of startle you especially it's with like the music music cue and the cut to the credits and yeah. all that stuff yeah um and like everyone at that moment just interprets like okay that little girl is dead 100 yeah. percent. like yeah you know. i guess before we rate it did i miss something uh what does he mean by like I never brought my long legs today. Like, what? Wh- what is the long legs? Is it just? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
I'm just what curious. Are the long legs? It's just another uh, layer know. of mystery, and okay, well, and it's an enigma. I was hoping I was just dumb and I missed what a long legs was, no. but I guess not. Don't make no sense to me. So, if you're new to the podcast, our review rubric is nay, okay, yay, or slay. So, Mike, what would you give? Long legs. Um, I'm gonna give long legs a very strong yay. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know me, I don't. I mean, one of the reasons why I'm never on this is because I don't ever go to movies, <laughs> partially because I'm working and partially because I just there's nothing that makes me go like, oh, I really want to go out and be among people <laughs> and yeah. then spend like twenty five dollars like for popcorn and stuff. But yeah, this was like. I was like, I need to see this 100%. And um, I feel like, you know, obviously, it w- you know, I wasn't, I was trying not to buy into the marketing of they're like, oh my God, this is the most evil movie. It's so evil and satanic. But I mean, it kind of is a little bit. And I just found it to be very effective and creepy and beautifully shot. And the actors in it were amazing. There was like moments that like actually kind of made my skin crawl. And I want to see it again very soon. Like I, you know, like Jill, if I could Do get, it. if I could get in a car and just drive to the movie theater, I would have gotten to see it probably the next day too. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that's my whole day gone. And so I will definitely go see it again in theaters before it leaves, hopefully. So, yeah, I give it like a strong. It's not like a masterpiece, but it I, it really like impressed me. And um, like I've been thinking about it. I saw it Thursday. So what's that like three days ago? Like I've been thinking about it nonstop ever since. So that's a very good sign. Maybe the next time it'll be a sleigh, but it's definitely like solid. Yay. I would recommend it. What about you, Colton? Yeah, I'm the same way. I think I settled on a, a good yay for this one as well. It, it, I, I think mostly as we mentioned just like the technicals of the movie i think are just off the charts it was one of those movies as i was watching it i felt like inspired to like want to try and make something that looks like this someday. nice like it, it's just like i love the shot composition i loved how like locked off and precise it was i liked how it you know had so many levels to the framing revealing things throughout it just subtly um i thought the you know the acting was great by michael monroe and nick cage even like that's a performance that would usually lose me, but yeah. since the rest of the movie is like very serious, or at least treating its subject matter seriously, it didn't lose me. And you know, it has a couple of excellent scenes. I will say that it does drag on a little bit for me. Like I said, the pacing's a little bit off. I don't fully like all the revelations of the third act, um, but I still think it's a really strong movie. It was one of those that I was kind of like laboring over. Am I gonna give it a three and a half or a four on Letterbox for like an hour after I saw it? Because I was like it's I was like, it's really good. Am I gonna go so far to say it's great? And then I have to go look and see, oh what else did I give, you know, four yeah. stars. So I, I really enjoy the movie. I think it's well worth seeing. And, you know, I I love Micah Monroe and basically everything I've seen her in. So hopefully she keeps picking interesting roles and making good movies. So yeah, it's a yay from me. What about you, Jill? I'm also going to give it a yay. Um, yeah, love the framing, love the whole vibe and aesthetic of everything. I like the storyline, especially the FBI part, and then what was going on between the mom and Lee Harker. I thought that was cool. Did lose me at the end a little bit, but I can suck it up enough to appreciate it for what it is. Another thing that I didn't mention that I really liked was when she was opening the card and the ink was still wet. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she smeared it. I thought Mm -hmm. that was also a nice little unsettling feature. And one thing we also didn't talk about yet was Nick Cage in the car, like singing and screaming. Yeah. Um, (laughs) It gives me so much joy. I I just love when he's crazy (laughs) and he's so good at it. And God, I I loved his makeup and his costume. And I love little riddles and people rhyming. And Kieran and Shipka was super creepy with whatever she was saying. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was great. So. Oh, can we please talk about for one second how she was totally channeling um, Jenna Malone in this movie? I found Absolutely. I was like, she's doing such a good unhinged Jenna Malone like role. What was it like her face even kind of looked like Jenna Malone? Yeah. At first I was like, oh my God, did they de-age Jenna Malone? And then I'm like, afterwards i was like but that was karen and shifka jesus christ (laughs) like (laughs) like i didn't recognize her either until like after the movie where i was like oh that was obviously karen and shifka like you know seeing her name and stuff in the credits i was like holy shit but at the time i was just you know she she looked just very different compared to the last thing i seen her in years ago and acted different oh yeah 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 she's incredible 
Yeah, it was very good. And if you're not following us on our socials already, you can do so at It Slays Podcast. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, slash your letterbox threads, Blue Sky. If there's a social media, we're probably there at It Slays Podcast. And if you want to help support the show financially, like our horror hounds, Holly, Nicholas, Patrick, Mark, Stephen, Joy, Dan, Brian, Trevor, and James, gain access to the Patreon exclusive show Stream Screams, hosted by Jill, and get episodes of the main show 48 hours early. Be sure to head on over to patreon.com slash It Slays Podcast and choose whatever tier works best for you. This this is where I usually would throw it to Rowan to plug the playlist. I'm going to be honest. Most of the time I just kind of zone out when he's plugging the playlist. But we do have a playlist. It's called the Horrific Playlist, I believe. <laughs> you, you, can, you can get to it through our link tree, uh, you know, which is attached to all of our social medias, uh, usually in the bio. And, uh, yeah, it's full of spooky music and scores and, you know, songs that are kind of used in horror movies. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, Check out the horrific playlist because why the hell not is usually what he says. Yeah. Um, next time on the show, uh, there seems to be like a little bit of a lull now in like kind of the major horror movie release calendar. So when I was looking at the, you know, what's coming up next, it looks like it's going to be probably M. Night Shyamalan's Trap in early August. <laughs> How are we feeling about that one? Looking to that one? Looking forward to it? Or He's hit or miss, man. I'm yeah. mostly miss. I'm going to say I am not a fan of him at all. I found the like kind of sub genre that he spawned, even though technically the films always like look really good and stuff. There was something about the like reliance on Twists. like a twist and like putting a little like trap in a box, you know, metaphorically mm-hmm. that just I was like, I'm not into this. It just... Yeah. I, I, like I it's it just doesn't appeal to me but um you know I've seen a couple of his films over the years and like you know usually it's like meh whatever but this I really want to see <laughs> oh because it another I, now the, slang. the plot oh, right wow. the the plot like kind of appeals to me but also like fucking Josh Hartnett is like the king of my life so <laughs> don't you judge okay, me well you know, well, M. Ma- Night's a local to me. Like, he's from around here. Oh, really? Oh, really? films are filmed Hilarious. around here. Yeah. Oh, geez. I know. Well, <laughs> thanks for joining us on this now slaying, Mike. You know, maybe you'll be back for Trap. Maybe, maybe. not. I have, I have my doubts, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, and obviously, Jill, you're always welcome back whenever, of course. And with that, I think that about wraps things up for this episode. So until next time, I'm Colton. Bye, He's Mike. Mike. She's Jill. Bye. <laughs> and as long as you keep listening, we'll keep slaying.